Hello, um, we're Mind the Men. We are a men's mental health suicide prevention group in Glasgow, and we've been working with Strackler University, and we would like to talk to you today about the report, the catalyst report that they've produced during the, the lockdown and, and during COVID. And it's focusing on the, the areas that people have um, reported on. There's 48 people that they interviewed and from all walks of life uh, throughout the uh, Glasgow and the west of Scotland and talking about how they've actually got through the lockdown and COVID and what things have done to stay positive. And we're going to talk today about six points, six points that we find we really resonate with, we really um, embrace because we think that they really can help you to stay positive um, during this difficult time. So I'm going to first of all start by introducing the, the group. I'm going to go around the group and it mind the men how we start our group meetings every every Monday night is we start by uh, just telling you the first name, who we are, and we just tell you one word how we're feeling. So we'll, we'll try that tonight then. So my name's Gary and I'm feeling good. So I'll move over to you. Hi, I'm Hugh and I'm excited to be doing this tonight. Thank you. Thanks, you. And now I'm going over to Mark now. Uh, hello, Gary. I'm Mark and I'm feeling good as well. Cheers, Mark. Thank you. And Duncan. Hi, everyone. I'm Duncan. Uh, good to be here tonight. Thank you. And next up, we've got John. He's Gary. Uh, hi there. My name's John and I'm doing good today. Cheers, John. And finally, we'll get Tony tonight. Tony, how are you doing? Hi, Gary. Yeah, I'm Tony, and I'm doing okay. Thanks, Tony. Okay. So, as I said, the report, the Catholic report that Strathclyde Uni have have published um, goes into some detail and, and examines um, some evidence found from various people they interviewed about what did they do to stay positive during during lockdown. Um, and we're obviously now entering into another lockdown. It's, it's really useful to hear some of these points. Um, so the first thing they, they talk about is thinking about the time and what you can do with the time, because maybe we've all got more time in our hands at the moment. More people will be staying uh, staying at home, working from home. Um, so time is, is different for all of us. So what I want to do, first of all, is, is speak to Mark, because that's something that Mark um, would like to, to share with you about what he's done with his time during lockdown. So over to you, Mark. Uh, thanks, Gary. Yeah, um, the, I think that most people, some people won't have enough time for the kids off school, but for my part, I've had more time with less opportunities to do things like go to the gym, some of them close, boot sport, watch sport and play sport and socialise. So you've actually had more time with less things to do. So for me, to combat that, the things I've done, um, rather than walk my dog for 15 minutes a day and twice a day, I now go out for uh, two hours in the morning and maybe an hour in the afternoon and walk my dog further afield into the woods, might not meet any people at all. And it's transformed me. I've lost weight doing that, which has been a real bonus. Lost over uh, nearly two stone. And I think that's due to the pub shut as well, mind you, but also the walking in particular. But also to keep my brain active, um, I'm very fond of poetry, but I've spent more time now memorising poetry, reading it, and looking at it and memorising it. And for the time at the end of this, we'll, we'll touch on a poem that uh, is very uh, current now in this lockdown about the time we use and how we use it and the enjoying time. So for me, I've set realistic goals of time. And in the report as well, you'll, you'll see that uh, people have chosen their hobbies, done more cooking, um, they've done more cycling. So had more time to do things they really enjoy and didn't have time to do when they were busy. So I think it's, if you look at it positively, time has been, uh, can be well used during during lockdowns. I know it's not easy for everyone who are feeling isolated, but you can do a hobby, you can find something to do, you can make your life better. So I think that's the message on time from me, Gary. hope that's okay. I'll pass back to you. Brilliant, that's great, Mark. Yeah, I think we're always guilty of saying we don't have enough time, don't we? And this has certainly given us maybe yeah. more time to do things. Some of the things that they mentioned in the report is things to ask ourselves, ask others is, how much time do you really have to make changes to your life given the new circumstances? Yeah. Um, and, and which are the most important and realistic things that you could achieve in the time that you actually have? So be realistic yeah, what yeah. you've done. Um, you've been out, I know, a lot with the dog. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've really focused on the poetry as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, so that was the first point then all about time. So the, the second part of the report, um, which we've been really enjoying reading, is about establishing routines. And we find certainly as a, a club, um, we do 
endorse this and really um, encourage the men to have routines and, and even just come into the club as a routine. So I'm going to ask Hugh then. So Hugh, um, you've been able to establish routines during this time, haven't you? And it's been really helpful for you. Hi, yeah, thanks, Gary. Um, yeah, like yourself and others, I would fully endorse the Catalyst Project report and uh, its findings are ones that certainly resonate with me based on my experience. Uh, the one I was asked to look at, if you can, make plans and establish a routine, something I'm very, very keen on. What that does for me, it gives me a, a level of consistency, predictability and a bit of control over my day. The report talks about uh, maybe going to the gym, making weekly plans, setting some goals, and just not being too hard on yourself if you're not able to actually meet any of them. But as long as you've got some targets, then that's good enough in itself. So what it offers me is an element of choice and control, and I find that really valuable. But a great report, and certainly more experience backs up the findings. Thank you. That's great, Hugh. Fantastic. Yeah, routines have, have been really helpful, haven't they, during this time? Excellent. Okay, um, moving on then. So the, the third point of the report that then we, we found was that um, was about nature, about stopping and thinking more about nature and the, the natural world that's around you. Uh, and this is something that at Mind the Men, we are really keen to get out as much as we can with the, the men and, and try and do as many social activities outside because um, it's really good for our well-being. So I'm going to ask uh, Duncan to talk a bit about this and, and share with us, Duncan, um, what you've done during this time in nature and how you've connected yeah. more with nature. Yeah, well, I remember, uh, this is one that particularly resonates with me because I remember the first lockdown, the, the overriding memory of it is a silence, the silence in the roads, just everything was just silent and it was just fantastic. It was as if the world had just taken the foot off the accelerator uh, and just paused everything. And all of a sudden you could start hearing bird sounds, bird uh, song, uh, you started seeing more, uh, animals wandering about at night time. You could see deers coming, deer coming into the street, foxes, etc., etc. It was just fantastic. Uh, and something you can actually combine with that uh, is get, getting out and about and going for walks, get into the country. And we actually did that with the the club. We did uh, we walked Conic Hill. Some went the high road, some went the low road. Uh, we also did the kilt walk, the kilt walk. So. The, all these things get you out into the country and you start to actually um, hear what's going on and start to appreciate the beauty of the countryside and nature around you. So that is a absolutely 100% uh, valid point that, that is in the report. Absolutely. Thank you. That's great, Duncan. Yeah, good point there. You made, you know, about connecting with nature, maybe things you never really appreciated before. And people in the report talk about feeling safe in nature and feeling relaxed and, you know, going for a walk in a forest or just looking yeah. at what's around them and taking more of a, being more observant about what's around you. So you've definitely um, shared that with us, what, what you've done. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much, Duncan. Um, Thank you. So the next thing we want to talk about and, and share with you is about reaching out and, and reaching out is something that, um, reaching out for support is something that at Mind the Main that we absolutely encourage and that's really what we're about. We're about um, providing a safe place that men can come who are having challenges in life and our main overarching aim is to reduce suicide and we provide a safe place that men can, can talk, um, be listened to and it's really important that we listen to each other so you have the space to talk about your own challenges and you learn from other people's experiences and that's what we find it's about the lived experiences that you have and how you've how you've dealt with that other people will learn from that and it really is helpful and also to feel supported at the end of the night and that's what we we, we try and provide so we are absolute advocates about reaching out and there's lots of great community groups um all over scotland that can can support uh, people and um, regardless of your circumstances so we would, we would definitely encourage people to do that be proactive and seeking help um, use the internet, um, great resource. We, we are finding um, different different groups or organisations that can help you. Um, we offer face-to-face -face sessions, we've been able to do that. And also we offer online sessions as well for those that maybe aren't able to leave the house. So we've been able to adapt as well to reach out and support those that need, need the help. And the, certainly the, the feedback that we've been getting is that what we offer is an essential service and and other groups like us are offering some of the things that are really are essential at this time. Um, and it's just about finding these organisations that can you can get the help. 
So really, really positive about reaching out. We'd, we'd really say that that's something that we'd encourage people to do. It's not always about support groups. It could be just joining something, being part of a, a wider community, doing something online, but just feeling connected by reaching out. So that's reaching out. So I'm going to move on now um, to to John, and we're going to just talk a wee bit about connecting with your neighbours and your community, because if anything, COVID has maybe um, allowed us to maybe connect more, maybe be more compassionate. And and John's going to talk a bit about that, and, and even in John's job, what he does is has helped helped him connect with the community as well. So, John, do you want to tell us about that? Here's Gary. Yeah, um, with my neighbours, I've got a couple of uh, older neighbours in uh, the street, and uh, one of my neighbours uh, has my has had my telephone number for a couple of years. So, um, phones if he ever needs any help in the house and stuff, and he knows I'm always there for him. Um, one of my other neighbours sadly lost her husband about a month ago. So. Um, when I've spoken to her and stuff, and uh, she knows she knows I'm here. She needs anything from the shops or just a chat, general chat. But with my job, I'm a plaster, self-employed plasterer, so every house I go into, um, basically, uh, I always have a, a chat with the young young couples or olders or middle-aged people, and uh, that sometimes I just want a, uh, somebody to listen to them. They, they maybe haven't seen anybody all day, and this is for people that are working from home as well um, due to COVID. So um, half an hour to an hour before I start doing my job, like, you know, I'll always have a, a good chat, most probably a cup of tea and that, that first thing. Um, and just just to, to listen to whatever issues they have um, because it's been a very strange year and uh, we're not used to this. We're, nobody's used to it. Um, so we're having to learn how to, to change certain things. So, um, but... Just talking, talking to people or even just listening. Listening is one of the biggest, biggest things that yeah. you can do. Um, and uh, yeah. if we can do that to the community and the, the, the people know that we're there, then that's 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 what we need to be doing uh, to help yeah. people get through this next set of um, lockdown as well. Um, because I do think the winter is going to be a, a, a tough one, um, especially if families can't meet for Christmas. That is going to be a, a really, really hard time for people. Yeah. So... They need to know that they can they can speak to people in the community and people in the community are going to be there for them. So so that's me, Gary. Great. Cheers. And I think when you I think when you do that, John, you you actually feel good in yourself, don't you? That you're helping other yeah. people, and that's a good it's good for our own well being when we help others. Yeah. Um, Definitely, it's, it's beneficial to us too, and I think we've all found that. So fantastic. Yeah. And again, the you Cheers. know the report endorses that. You know about. Uh, helping vulnerable people, about people sharing even things like vegetables have grown in their gardens or their vegetable patches. Um, you know, just if you're living in a, a block of flats, about checking in on your elderly neighbours. There's just so many ways, and and I said I think a lot of people have um, have shared similar stories that we've talked about here. So, really, really important, fantastic. So the last part of the report um, is about incorporating some physical activity into your life, which a lot of us want to do, and it's not always possible, but there's real benefits from that, and, and physical activity really benefits your mental well-being as well. And Tony's going to give us a, an example of what he's done during COVID to um, to really improve his physical ability, which which in turn has helped your mental health as well, hasn't it, Tony? Yeah, certainly. Um, what I was going to share with the group, right, Gary, was basically the the fact is that you know when um, I was doing when it, when COVID started coming out originally. You know, I was, I was I regularly go to the gym, but yeah. you know that at the time when things started closing down and working from home and just trying to get used to the routines again, you know, I, I was finding that I was kind of snacking. I wasn't following a routine. Um, very quickly though, I decided to look into things. I started getting apps to help me get fitter. I went on YouTube, went on all these other things, and started to basically feel better, get a routine for myself. And then I found that I was incorporating more things. So it wasn't just going for a run in the morning. I was doing hit exercising. And then I was actually doing some mindfulness as well in the hours that I would normally spend during the gym, doing in the gym. So I found, to be honest with you, just as it's saying in the report, um, to get into some kind of fitness regime, to give some well-being, not only just looking after your physical, but your mental side as well. And these things helped a lot for me. So I just want to kind of endorse what things I've said in the report and obviously say, you know, that this is a good way to look forward. And especially when we get into, John was saying, get into lockdown now, I've certainly got the tools to 
get myself through this one. So thanks very much, guys. Appreciate that. Brilliant. Fantastic, Tony. And I think you've inspired a lot of us to kind of get out there, even if it's only for 10 minutes or, you know, we don't all have to be, you know, at the gym. It's you can go in for a walk. Um, it's just doing something that's a bit of exercise. It's been it's been good to do. So it's really been beneficial. So, so yeah, I mean, I think we all agree. We're, we're, we really think this, is, this report's come at the right time and it covers a lot of fantastic points. And it's something that we talk to the guys, um, or we will be talking to the guys in the club about, about some of the, the points that have been raised within the report. Um, and just to reiterate, you know, um, it's nothing that's here that we, we don't really know about. It's it's something that a lot of us are doing, but it's just taking the time to recognise the benefits of, of these different points that have been raised in, in this report, the Catalyst report. So we want to thank Strathclyde University for inviting Mind the Men to, to talk to you about this report and to, to share some of our uh, stories about what we've done uh, during lockdown and, and to try and, try and stay as positive as we can. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll, we started with Mark tonight, who was talking about time. Um, and Mark is our resident poet in the club. So we're going to end um, by Mark, if that's okay with you, Mark, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah. Would you like to share one of your poems that would uh, really uh, drive home the importance of, of positivity and, and what we've talked about tonight? Bear in mind, this is my poem, Gary. This is uh, this is a famous Welsh poet uh, called W. H. Davis. If you can do one thing, guys, just look at this poem because I think it's the most relevant poem to the times, the strange times we find ourselves in. And when he wrote the poem, he realised the world's a busy place, and has the the, the 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 poem's called Leisure, and it's about embracing uh, just slowing down. And so that's the time when our time has slowed down. So the poem goes like this. What is this life we're full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see in woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can and rich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this, but full of care. We don't have time to stand and stare. That's it, guys. Well done. Well said, Mark. Well okay. said. So we always finish the club at Mind the Men um, with Tony um, finishes the night by... <laughs> we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Um, and this is the way of us all connecting, really, and just um, showing that we're connected. So we, we finish with uh, Tony's clap, don't we, Tony? So I'll hand over to Tony to finish off the night then. Thanks, Gary. Okay, guys, on the count of three. One, two, three. Well, well done. done. <laughs> well done, team. Thank you. Switch off the recording, Gary.